Hello everyone, welcome back to Chill Deal Trades where I analyze the market so you know what's going on. Today we're going to be covering GM and Ford because a lot has taken place today. We both saw down both of these stocks down pretty drastically. So let's dive in to figure out what's really going on. We're going to look at the fundamentals as well as the chart to figure out what we're seeing in terms of where the price could be headed in the short term. If you're here and you have hit the sub button, please go ahead and smash that and join the squad. Um, we're on our journey to 500 subs, so please help us get there. I put out daily-ish videos for you guys. And then by November, we want to hit 1,000. So please join the squad. We also have a Discord. Join the Discord. All that's in the description. But let's jump into things. So the first stock I want to look at is GM. If you're here for Ford, you can go, you know, I'll have a little section at the bottom for you to find the Ford info. Let's start with GM. So the first thing I want to call out, and I always look at this, is institutions. So the main call out here is we saw a lot of buying last quarter, but we also saw a lot of selling, you know, about a billion difference. Going into Q3 so far, we're seeing more selling than buying. So we really want to pay attention to this going to Q3 because if we start seeing an acceleration of selling above buying, then we're going to be seeing a lot of people are taking profits from when the stock was trading really low over the past year or two and they're going to start selling off those profits. So that's something we really want to keep an eye on. Next thing I want to look at is just earnings. So we had earnings come out today. Um, really great in terms of numbers. So we saw when we come here on the earnings per share, 6% beat. When we come to revenue, it was a 15% beat to earnings. Um, and when you actually break down the numbers, there's a lot of positive things. Um, I think I remember seeing that in terms of um, revenue it's the best they've done since they went they they um, bank went bankrupt and so there's a lot of really big positives that are happening for GM but the question is why the heck did it sell off nine percent and so there's really one reason I want to look at and that reason is all about chips and commodity headwinds so there's been a lot going on um, if you don't pay attention to macro things that are happening in the economy that's really why I think both Ford and GM are down not necessarily the business, but more the macro. So we're seeing inflation stay um, um, higher than normal. You know, I don't think we're going to see, you know, crazy amounts of um, hyperinflation. We talk about that on the on the podcast a lot. Me and my buddy do it on um, we do a live stream um, on Twitch. So that descriptions and um, that details in the description as well. But you could check that out. But we're seeing both semiconductors. You know, that industry. We're seeing a lot of supply shortage. And then we're seeing really high commodity prices. And so high commodity prices plus shortage equals a lot of missed revenue. And when we have missed revenue, what that means is we have missed out on growth. And so with the economy kind of overheating, as people are calling it, because we're seeing interest rates super low artificially by the Fed and we're seeing inflation start to rise, we need to see growth if inflation is going to stay high. And due to the shortages, we're not seeing that. And so even though they've reported amazing numbers, you know, a lot of great changes in the company in terms of positive momentum moving forward, in the short to intermediate term, we're having a lot of issues. So people are taking profits for that reason, as well as the stock has gone on a rampage and people want to take that 100% profit that they've made. So those are things we want to look at. Another thing I want to look at, just kind of breaking down more of their revenue and earnings. Thank you, Ticker, um, as always, for letting me have access to the platform. But the main thing here is, when we look at last quarter, you know, we did see a little bit of slowage, you know, a little bit of slow. We saw, you know, we went back above, back to around 34 range for revenue. But this is something we're going to pay attention to. Are we seeing what year over year growth are we seeing for the company? Because in this time where we're expecting high growth for all companies due to all the stimulus, all the Fed spending, if we don't see continuous growth in the revenue side of things for the business, um, then that's going to be an issue for the short or intermediate term over the next few quarters. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts now. I want to cover everything GM first. Um, and so the first thing I want to call out is kind of what's been happening more recently, um, more on the daily chart. So the first thing I want to call out, and I and I said this back, you could watch my video when I did my, my, first, uh, my first video. I think it was back here. I mean, my first video, I said, this stock is not breaking above 63. There's too much long-term resistance, um, you know. Uh, but I put great content for you guys, so I hope you're appreciating it. But we saw a peak in RSI. 
And since then, we've kind of been hovering under 50. And so whenever we hover under 50, that's a bearish indicator for the stock. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing downward pressure and we're seeing down negativity there. We also saw that crossover on, on RSI back there, or on MACD, which is also calling out more negativities in the short to intermediate term, for at least for now. And so these are things that we need to see reverse before I'm interested in buying. Um, if we see a pullback to some of these support ranges, which we'll cover in a second, then I'll consider buying. But these are two things we really want to pay attention to. I would say we probably have a little bit of green day tomorrow just because such a big sell off, but you never know what's going to happen. But the first thing I want to call out is a 50 day moving average on the daily. We really tried to break out of it multiple times and we couldn't. And so that's super bearish. We tried here, fell. We tried here and failed again. That's very, very bearish for the stock. When we look at the 100 day, we also see the 100 day, that same price, about that same range. We couldn't break above. So we couldn't break above the 50 or 100 day, which is really negative momentum for the stock. And now we're at the 200 day. So this is going to be a really important decision point because the last time on the daily we've touched the 200 day was back in September. So, you know, we're in a really important zone here, as you can see, a lot of accumulation back at the beginning of the year. And so if we break below this, then we're going to have to be looking at sh lower um, support zones. We have a line back from the beginning of COVID here that we're coming up on pretty soon. So if we do break below the 200 day, we're going to want to keep an eye on this trend line if we can hold it. If we can't hold that, then we're going to want to look at these support, these support lines here. We have a lot of support at this range, which is 4940. And then below that, we have a lot of support we're at this fell breakout before and where we ended up breaking out, which is around 46. So that's the zone I'm going to be looking at if we continue to break down. If we go on the weekly chart, one of the main things I want to look at is the 50 day. So when we look at the 50 day on the weekly chart, we see it at that 48 level where we, um, and as you can see, let me zoom in here. We can see all that support in that area. So we can see, if we, we have to see if we can hold the 50 day on the weekly chart. Um, when I kind of did somewhat of, you know, some Elliott wave, I did see a five wave up. And so in theory, we would want to see a five way down before a correction. And we're seeing that a little bit more developed on the Ford chart, which we'll get to later. When we look at the 100 day, we do have it quite a bit lower. Um, this would be pretty detrimental if the stock goes this low. But on the flip side, I will say is on Ford, we have seen Ford break down quite a bit more than GM at this point in terms of the chart structure, where we have Ford more at like this price range when we look at breakout. And we see Ford potentially, if it continues to move off, move out to move back to this breakout point so we could have a lot more downside in gm um, in the near future but those are price points we really want to want to look at i want to go to ford now um, just so we get through all the content but the first thing very similar to gm institutional buying we saw a huge in the in this beginning of this year but we also saw a lot of selling last quarter and so so far we're seeing a little bit more selling than buying and we'll have to see if this persists through q3 if it does then we could see some profit taking over the next quarter, if not the next two quarters. So we really want to pay attention to that institutional buying. When it comes to earnings, um, let me come jump here. Uh, Ford had, I would say, a pretty good quarter holistically, you know, when we look at year over year numbers. But when we actually look at, um, this is the one I want, when we look at the revenue, we actually see it falling. And very similar to GM, it was all about this shortage. You know, both of GM and Ford have lots full of cars and trucks with no chips in them. Ford, I made it, I talked about it in my last video, Ford was even sending trucks to dealers and training their staff how to insert, how to put in the chips into the, into the cars and to the trucks. And so this is the main issue. Growth, I keep talking about growth. Will we see this shortage and issue um, the shortage and the high commodity prices really cause um, a, a lot of, a lower growth for both these companies. I'm really curious what you guys think. Uh, do you think we're going to see persistent um, shortages over the over the, probably the next year into 2022 or not? So that's the main thing when it comes to revenue. Again, you know, Ford had really good numbers. You know, crazy beat on revenue, um, but they did see a bit. A, a large decrease in net income. And again, that's because of all the higher expenses they're seeing. Um, but there's a lot of healthy things in the chart, holistically speaking. You know, 300% B on, e on earnings per share. 
okay, they're becoming a really healthy company. Look at these beats. This is becoming a really healthy company, but again, we have macroeconomic factors that are causing a big impact. Um, one of the positive things when I was looking to the news was, you know, we, we saw that um, 120 orders for the Cybertruck so far, or that's the Tesla for the Ford uh, Lightning. I think it's what's called F-150 Lightning, um, which is really big positive. But on the flip side, with all the, even, I think even a, a bigger negative for Ford is that we're also having issues with electric vehicle production in terms of batteries and things. So it's like a double-edged sword, um, both on the, ch the sh chips and on the batteries. So we'll have to see how much of a kink that puts, because if Ford comes out and say, you know what, we're going to have to delay the orders of all of the trucks, that's going to have a really big negative on the stock. So that's something we want to keep an eye on there. Um, and very similarly to... Um, very similarly to GM, you know, we're having those same issues of we're seeing high demands. We're seeing um, we're seeing people want to buy trucks. They're buying them at full price, but there's a shortage on lots. There's a shortage of trucks, and until that really works itself out, um, then that's going to be an issue. Um, what we can see right here, the results come from Tesla Monday said. The chip crunch remains serious and hard to predict, and last week Intel warned of shortage stretching into 2023. So how long is this shortage going to last? And if it stays, if, if the timeline of when we have enough chips to fully pick up the, the demand that's in the market, will that demand no longer be there? Uh, you can listen to our podcast on Stock Talk Game that me and my buddy do. We talked about all these things in our podcast where we're not seeing any signs of the shortages, um, um, any any signs of this shortage um, coming coming to a close anytime soon. And we're still seeing demand for the time being. But we're starting to see a lot of kinks in the arm at a macro a macroeconomic perspective that say that consumer demand could be slowing in terms of growth. So the last thing I want to take a peek at is just the four charts. And so let's go to the daily first. Um, the first thing I want to look at, actually let's go to the weekly because I have a bunch of numbers here. So kind of similar to GM, I did see a five-way structure to the upside, which was completed at this peak. And it looks like on the weekly chart, in my last video, I said we already finished the five wave on the way down. But when I better looked at the weekly chart, it looks like we are we can potentially still be completing a fifth wave down. What we really want to pay attention to is if we can hold this price point. If we can hold the, the back low at the third wave, then we'll just double bottom and we'll potentially see some upside or at least some sideways action, and that's kind of confirmed itself. But we have to hold that three wave bottom to say that, you know, this five wave has been complete and this was actually the fifth wave. So that's something we're going to pay attention to on the weekly chart. We also want to look at the moving averages. So when we look at the 50 day, and I mentioned this in the last video that I made on Ford, go watch those because a lot of good content as well on news updates and such. Um, we do see the 50 day on the weekly be around the same price as the 200 day on the daily chart. It's about in this range, you know, the fifth day is a little bit lower, but this was my back here. I thought we had the fifth, fifth wave ending here and I thought we were gonna push a little bit lower and we did it. So we'll have to see if we end up coming down to this 200 day on the daily chart. And we really need to hold this 200 day, multiple reasons why. First reason, if we break below this support range, then we've confirmed a downtrend a big picture downtrend has started because what we're seeing on the chart is higher lows or higher highs and higher lows but if we break below that we no longer have higher lows and we could start a lower lows and and higher lows so we really need to hold this area this is like lying in the sand for me i mentioned it before around that 11 dollar range but if we come back here into where that 200 day is you know, it might even creep up a little bit over the next couple weeks to around 12 bucks. If we can hold around that $12, I think we're comp completing the fifth wave as well as we're bouncing off the 200 day, which is extremely bullish for me heading into the second half of the year. We're still seeing the same kind of things on RSI and MACD, not showing a whole lot of life, but this is what I'm really keeping an eye on over the coming weeks. If we can hold above this $11 range and complete this fifth wave. Um, I hope you guys, that was a ton of information. I hope you liked the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, do all those things, support the channel. I really want to know what you guys think about these companies. Um, but I appreciate you tuning in and I make a video just about every day. So I'll see you again tomorrow.